Recently, my dear friend Emily gave my wife Jenny a beautiful patchwork infinity scarf made from wool. Well, I found this incredible flannel bundle and thought, oh, I gotta make one. Let's get started. I must say, I don't believe I have found a flannel fabric that I like better. This is Robert Kaufman's Shetland flannel and it handles and sews like butter. I just love it. But my goodness, I fell in love with that fat quarter bundle and I thought I want to make those awesome infinity scarves out of it. And this bundle with all of the colors in there, literally I broke it apart and I have created six different colorways to make all of these wonderful patchwork scarves. Now the construction is incredibly easy. I'm going to walk you through it. I've actually approached it a couple of different ways. So this I think is the most efficient way to handle this from your bundle, and of course, you could always use yardage. Missouri Star has a bunch of the Shetland flannel yardage, but we're doing our bundle and they're fat quarters. So you're gonna take three fat quarters and they can be coordinated based on color, or they could be coordinated based on the hound's tooth print or whatever textures of the flannel. Works both, it's great, right? Once you have them all chosen, break them all apart, make your color families, then I want you to build up a pile. We're gonna press and cut all of these three layers at once, or I should say three fabrics at once, six layers. So I've already pressed these two and I'm laying them nice and flat along the selvet or the fold here, lining them up. And I'm also going to go ahead and press this to get the creases out. And one of the things I found with this flannel, like I said, it really cuts beautifully and it sews beautifully. The more prep time we have, the better all of the sewing process is going to go because we have a really long seam that we're going to make. So just take a time and make sure we get really good clean cuts. Okay, I'm going to line this up here and I'm also looking at the corners because I'm going to trim down those edges here. Okay, so it starts by taking off the selvages and I want to show you a trick. If you've got a short ruler and a long cut, watch this. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to come over here to this line and I'm looking at the 10 and a quarter line. And I chose 10 and a quarter because when I cut over here, it will remove the selvages through all the layers. It's a little bit thick, so I want you to push down on the ruler, have a good sharp blade in your cutter and just slice away. Now, here's the trick. I'm going to move this to expose it and I'm going to move my ruler up just as little as I need to get to the top. And now I'm still looking at this line to cut and this line over here on that 10 and a quarter to keep everything nice and square. So that cuts through to finish like that. Now we're gonna true up our edge. So I'm rotating because I'm right-handed. The first cut I want you to take off as little as possible. So I'm looking at my edge of my flannel to see that I'm just, just getting a nice straight cut here. And now the pieces I've done for the scarf that you see me wearing, it's nice and thick, nice and wide. It's going to be an eight and three quarter inch cut. So I'm taking over here, I'm looking at eight and three quarters distance. Now, if you're using your own fabric, of course, you're really just going to split this in half, okay? So I'm looking here, eight and three quarters. I'm going quick and I don't want to mess this up. I want to make another great scarf when I'm done here. So there's the first cut. We're going to set that aside. I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to eight and three quarters. Now I've got plenty out here, but let's say you realize I didn't do my math right. Well, Cut what you need here and go back and shave down the other piece. It's really just kind of a design as you go project. Okay, but now I have two perfect sets, six rectangles at the moment, but I also want to go ahead and make a couple of extra small squares for some patchwork. I'll show you the layout here. So I'm just going to choose any two fabrics and I'm going to cut them basically in half. So I'm just going to come down here, looking at all the lines on my ruler, keeping it nice and square. I'm going to cut the fold out here. So now I technically have two, four squares like that. Now it's layout time. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to marry in two rectangles and two of the squares and what I don't want is any of your same fabrics touching and eventually this is going to loop back around here to make the entire infinity. So if you look I have different fabrics all the way down and I will make a similar combination but I want to show you the way I stitch these together. Let me show you in this example what I'm talking about about stitching together all of our strips. Now first 
I did have a rectangle and two squares in the middle and a rectangle. And on a, the other layout, I kind of started with a square. Then I put my two rectangles in the middle and finished with a square. Either way, your rules are, you always have different fabrics touching when you come around in each individual strip, right? And now you're also gonna have four of these shorter edges, one and only one of them. We're gonna do a special trick. We're gonna take it and we're gonna fold it to the wrong side. And I'm just gonna do a really fine little stitch just to basically get rid of that raw edge. We're gonna use that for closing the scarf up at the very, very end. So once all my pieces were patchworked together, I wanna press them and I actually press them on this table so I can start to build them to get ready to stitch. So I literally have my iron nice and hot and I come through and I'm pressing and setting my seams, pressing and setting my seams as I lay it all across the table, right? But then at this point, I'll drag it all the way through and I've pressed these pretty darn well, so I'm just gonna keep on moving. Then what I wanna do is I wanna take the ends that were not that special end that I treated, the raw edge ends, and we're gonna start down here and I'm gonna lay those nice together and the reason I did the squares and the rectangle combinations is so I don't have any seams to match up here, right? I don't have another seam underneath there that I have to make sure is perfect. And then as I go through here, I like to use these wonder clips. And what I will do on the wonder clips, starting about a good, oh, two inches down or so on these raw edges, I'm just going to take a wonder clip and go down about every eight to ten inches while I pat and smooth the two layers of flannel together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish clipping this all out and I'll meet you back at the sewing machine to show you how to get started. We're ready to start sewing and part of the work of this, again, I just want these big long seams to go together nicely. So I'm keeping the weight of the scarf instead of being in my lap, kind of on the table next to me. And as a reminder, I'm starting up here where those two raw edges were, but I also am gonna start down about an inch or so because we're going to eventually join those two seams too. Okay, and I need that room to work. So I'm gonna take a little stitch, I'm gonna back stitch, I'm gonna move my wonder clip out of the way, and then with just a quarter inch, I'm gonna take a nice slow stitch. And what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and finish the entire run, but when you're done with that side, I want you to come back and start at the same side again so that you're also using that raw edge. So you'll be flipping the scarf over, looking at another side, right? Also starting about one inch down with the back stitch here like yay, lock that in and then you'll run that seam all the way till the end and I've got another sample already set up to show you that step, right? So let me just slide this out of the way and here is my one of my favorite combinations of the gray family and I'll just quickly point out here is that end where I have left the one inch opening so I can go ahead and get in there and stitch. It's a full tube. This is that special end that was already stitched over. And now we're just gonna reach our hand in here. You don't need the man sewing tube trick. Your arm will fit here. Grab an end and pull it out nice. Now, at this point, if you'd like to take a little bit of time and press, I definitely recommend it. Okay, we'll be top stitching these edges but I wanna show you the finishing step. So I'm gonna just say press it through. Now what I want you to do is I want you to come down here where you have that opening, bring it around to the side that is the raw edge. So I've got a raw edge in my right hand, a raw edge in my left hand, and these are coming around right sides together. I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the machine here with that same quarter inch seam allowance. So just like I joined everything else earlier, and that inch gives us great room to work. Let's go ahead and back stitch up here. And I'm just gonna line up my pieces, finish this off real quick for us. And at this point, we're gonna actually I should have pointed out, make sure you don't have any twists in your scarf. I haven't had that happen, but I could see where it would. Okay, so come in real close. We've got these raw edges in here. We've got this finished edge. This will be the very last edge we address. So as I get ready to top stitch these outer edges, I want to make sure I'm just kind of accounting for everything. And I've got another sample where I've set it up, and I think you can see the threads a little bit better. It's this wonderful red combination here. Okay, and so I have done a little bit more work on this one. 
than where we're at in the demo, but I want you to be able to see what I'm really talking about. So this is the top stitching that will actually help secure and flatten out the scarf beautifully. We're going to do both sides exactly the same. I'm going to show you as we finish over here. So. As I come into the machine, I have a, a stiletto or a bamboo skewer or scissor tip or something handy, and I'm using my edge guide, and I've got my top stitching, and the top stitching is nice. I'm always kind of pulling on this outer edge, flattening down the seam. Let's lock that thread in, because I'm kind of picking up here. You will still be in the process you're doing. And then as I come down, what I want to do is I'm going to stop for a second. Let me move this edge guide so you can really see what we're talking about in here. Okay, just slide that out of the way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the piece that has the, raw, the finished edge, and it's gonna lay on top of the piece that has the raw edge. And I'm also just making sure that my seams are nice along the edge, and I'm gonna hold that with my stiletto as I finish it out. Of course, you would have your seam guide still right there, but I just moved it so you could see, and you've captured that corner. And you did the same when you started on the other side as well. I actually normally do that as I'm starting so that the rest of the top stitching works great. Once that is done, I pull the seam guide completely off the machine and I prepare to close it. And I'm gonna close it by taking the finished edge, that special edge we created earlier. I'm gonna lay it right under the needle and I'm gonna tuck underneath that raw edge. Didn't even try to fold it. I left the raw, raw edge running long so I have the body of it. I'm gonna back stitch to secure again. And I'm just stitching down that finished edge, which is finishing off our entire project. Now, the other benefit of this, I learned, I've made several of these samples, you might find that you have a little bit of extra ripple or something happening in here. You can kind of adjust for it at the edge if you need by tucking up that raw edge a little further if you had to. I'm bragging, mine's about perfect if I may say. Might be the only sewing project that ever turns out this good in my life. <laughs> Maybe it's because I went slow. I've only had 80 cups of coffee this morning. Now, technically, this scarf is literally all done because once you've finished off that straight edge, I'd like you to go back and top stitch all of your short seams. Now, some places you're gonna top stitch, it's gonna come out and show as a single line on the other side. Some places like this where you had seams that were close, it's gonna make some extra character. So you can add top stitching to also add character. You could do, do double lines of top stitching just to make it look really, really terrific. Not only that, as you know, I love to wear scarves. And as I said earlier, this flannel not only sews beautifully, but it feels beautifully as well. So Robert Kaufman, my hat is off to you for a fantastic flannel for these awesome infinity scarves. And I just got to wander around town showing it off while you start yours right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.